Most of the video clips you saw in the Micro V2 video were taken with the Freestyle VTX. If you want to see how the VTX performs compared to a high power analog VTX, I'll have a video link to that right here. So please go and check that out uh, separate from this video. Here's the HD0 Freestyle VTX. There's a retention for the MIPI connector right here. And there's also a retention that you can put on for the UFL antenna. There's thick aluminum heat sinks to dissipate heat. Heat uh, tends to be dissipated from the corners of the board and then uh, from direct heat dissipation on the uh, chips directly into the heat sink. I'll show a picture of what that looks like after I take it apart. I've put some E6000 uh, in the openings here to waterproof this board, if you're wondering what that is. Let's get a weight measurement. So it weighs about uh, 26 to 27 grams. It's a very stout VTX, and I can confirm that it can take a hit. When I was testing this out uh, <clears throat> with one of the earlier beta units, I lost tracer, and uh, the drone fell from a very high height and hit a tree, and uh, there was actually tree bark stuck into one of the corners. <laughs> uh, VTX still worked. So for dimensions, uh, it's 40 millimeters by 40 millimeters by about 10 and a half millimeters at the thickest. And then uh, there's this small protrusion here for the antenna. I'm trying to measure that quick. Sticks out another about two and a half millimeters. This board is about the same outside uh, profile as a 30 by 30 ESC, in case you're wondering. So most places that will be able to fit a 30 by 30 ESC or a 30 by 30 flight controller, this will slot onto the same position on the frame. And that's what I've done, and I'll show you some of my builds. So here's the main build that I've been testing the Freestyle VTX in. It's the 533 footy frame. This frame is designed for getting uh, smooth cin cinematic shots in a uh, five inch freestyle build. And I think it's amazing. Anyway, that aside, uh, this is also the one that I've been doing the analog testing comparisons. So it's a little bit of a Frankenstein quad. Um, I've got the Micro V2 mounted up here, and then this is actually the uh, RC18G or the uh, Rattel 1.66 millimeter lens that I have mounted on there, which is why it's a little bit bigger. This is the uh, Run Camera Micro Eagle analog camera. So here's the bottom of the quad um, where I've got the VTX mounted, and I'll show you the profile here, what that looks like. So these are standard um, standoffs or st st standard stack screws on on the main stack. Um, I did put some low profile nuts um, on the bottom of the ESC to have more clearance. It is a thick board. I have had no problems mounting the ES mounting the VTX above the ESC, provided there's a little bit of clearance between the ESC and the VTX for airflow purposes. But uh, all of the test video you've seen has been uh, with the, the VTX mounted directly over top of the ESC like I have here. So the uh, aluminum heat sinks and RF shields on this unit are presumably doing some work to, to block any noise from the ESC. Now moving to the back of the quad, uh, where typically you'd see a Cadex Vista mounted, I've decided to move the flight controller from the center stack 
back to this 20 by 20 mounting position for the Cadex Vista in this frame. And that works great. There is no requirement in flight controllers for the flight controller to be mounted in the center of the, of the drone. Zero requirement. You can mount it in uh, a multitude of locations. So as long as everything's stiff, which this frame is very stiff, uh, you can mount it forward, backward, it doesn't matter. So that's what I've done. Uh, and then I've got the 4-in-1 ESC cable um, going back to the uh, ESC here. And I've got the ESC uh, choosing to have the 4-in-1 go forward. You could also have it come out the side. Um, this should be uh, not new to anybody that, that builds freestyle frames. So this is an example of how you take a frame that was designed for a Vista and relatively easily put the freestyle VTX into it and have it work well. Uh, the other thing that could be done here uh, is, is we could put a 20 by 20 uh, stack in the uh, spot where I've got the 30 by 30 stack in the center and then we can shift this forward and then open up more space in the back and then uh, tape or have a 3D printed mount to, to mount the uh, Freestyle VTX in the back like the uh, DJI Air Unit would mount in this in this frame. Now coming out uh, the back and going to the antenna I've got the included uh, antenna that comes with the kit. It's the same antenna as the uh, Runcam Link but it'll be branded uh, for HD0 and that's included with the VTX so that you have a good experience. Um, there's again that retention I was talking about to keep the VTX retained, or to keep the um, antenna UFL retained at all times. Uh, on this build, I've got the 80 millimeter, um, I've got the 80 millimeter MIPI cable going from uh, this spot here, which I could be using the MIPI retention plate, but I'm not, up to the, the camera, and that's plenty of space. So if you're running a center mounted, uh, VTX design, you don't need as long as a, of a MIPI cable, and the also the included um, antenna is going to be uh, plenty long to get to the back of the frame. Some other things that are super important to, to note, if you power this VTX from 6S battery voltage on um, this first revision of the VTX, it will die. Ask me how I know. Just kidding, don't ask. Um, so what I recommend doing is getting a um, flight controller that has a BEC rated to be able to power the, the uh, DJI Air Unit. Uh, so that's going to be like a 9 to 12 volt um, you know, HD DJI connection. Um, that tends to be enough power to power this. This requires 15 watts of power. So on this particular um, Hobbywing F7 uh, flight controller, uh, it has a 10 volt, two amp uh, BEC, um, and, uh, and it is enough to, to power this full time at max power. Uh, it is best to have a little bit of margin. So technically this guy can handle uh, 20 watts, um, and so it can easily do 15 watts continuous, and uh, that's that's what I've seen so far in testing. For people that don't have a BEC or don't want to get a different flight controller with a BEC, there is going to be a uh, 6S um, BEC uh, step-down voltage regulator included in the VTX kit for this first revision of VTXs that can't operate on uh, success voltage directly. Next, let's take a look at the uh, iFlight Nazgul HD. I think that's what this frame is. I, I uh, did receive it from a friend for free, so I'm not sure exactly. In the front here, I've got the Micro V2 camera that, uh, that fits perfectly with the, with the standard lens. Uh, because this camera is a more standard shape. 
And then take this uh, Freestyle VTX and you can mount it in the back of the frame where the, the uh, air unit would normally go. I put some uh, soft mount um, mounts on here uh, just because I like to soft mount things, but you can figure out your own way to do it. So it just goes back there, um, and now that's held in place. And in case you're wondering about prop strikes, let's take a look at that. So if we take and put a prop in the spot where the prop would go, um, it does not uh, touch the VTX. And of course, uh, it's normally going to be elevated anyway. But uh, I just want to show you, like in the worst case, that there's no way that this propeller can hit the VTX. And if it did hit the VTX, um, I can assure you this VTX would take the hit. <laughs> from personal experience. Not from a propeller, but uh, from a tree. Um, the other place, of course, that we can mount this VTX on this frame is is just to, to put it on the center stack, like I was showing you on the... Um, footy frame. So many, many frames have the ability to accept 30 by 30. Um, with this unit being um, as thin as it is, even though it looks thick, it's, it's much thinner than, let's say, a Vista or an air unit. With as thin as it is, you can, you can fit two components on the stack. Um, so if you need to put ESC or a flight controller on the same um, item, the same stack, you can do that. I do not recommend uh, doing a three high stack. There's a lot of heat coming off of this, 15 watts of power that need to be dissipated to heat. And it's, it's also very thick. So find a way to uh, either get like a 30 by 30 AIO and put this above that, um, or put you know a, a 30 by 30 ESC and then put this above that 30 by 30 ESC uh, and then put a 20 by 20 FC in the back or put the, um, like put put this in the back like this either with a screw mount or I've even seen a lot of success just just using some double sided tape because this has a really thick and very capable um, heat spreader. If you do end up uh, doing VHB tape or something like that to hold this down, I recommend putting a zip tie through these uh, mounting holes and running it around the outside of the frame. So this is uh, definitely not going to come off. But it should be a pretty easy VTX to mount. Um, if you have trouble mounting it, I I just doubt you will, uh, except in a very tight build. Um, this is not going to probably work too well on a I don't know three to four inch frame. So there's that. So let's talk cost and value. This product is very important for. HD0 and it needs to provide a good experience, needs to be robust, and it needs to come in at a price that uh, people can afford. So there will be a freestyle kit made available that includes the Freestyle VTX, the antenna, the 80 millimeter MIPI cable, and the Micro V2 with 4x3. So $149 for a complete video system setup for freestyle. This supports 4x3 and camera settings out of the box. I think that's a pretty good value. The VTX by itself is going to be uh, $99, including the antenna. So $99 with antenna. HG0 is providing an antenna so that you have a good experience and you don't have to source different antennas that might have problems. I found that uh, UFL to SMA adapters cause a lot of problems for these VTXs. Um, it's one of the most common complaints in the, the support section. And what happens is the, the UFL to SMA pigtail uh, oftentimes will have a little break in the uh, connection point between the um, cable and the the SMA and uh, there's also some losses signal losses that you have going from uh, SMA to an SMA antenna and it's just better to run a direct uh, UFL antenna 
And so that's what's included in the box. So that's a wrap on this video. Uh, one last thing here, I did measure the distance between the VTX and the camera and it's about 90 millimeters. So a uh, 120 millimeter MIPI cable would work um, ideally for this type of frame where the VTX is mounted all the way in the back. Um, I think this VTX will be made available in the kit form somewhere around the end of January, maybe early February. There's a lot of issues around human malware in China right now that are putting things into lockdown and uh, keeping things from being shipped out. But I assure you, uh, a good chunk of these VTXs are uh, built up and ready to ship. That's what Carl's told me. It's a great product. I can't wait for everyone to get their hands on it. Uh, take a look at my videos comparing this Freestyle VTX to uh, the best analog VTXs out there, in my opinion. I think it compares very, very well and uh, does much better in most cases. Exciting time to be in FPV. Have fun. Go fly. Stay safe.